The oldest building on Grand Cayman is St. James Castle, Pedro. Erected in 1780, it was built by William Eden, who was born in Wiltshire, England, and came to Cayman in 1765. William Eden, the builder of this castle, he was my great-grandfather. Pedro Castle was built in 1780 by slave labor. The house is situated on the south coast between Bodtown and Spots. And the upper stories will give you a good command of the greater portion of the eastern part of the island. He later moved to Georgetown and built a two-storied house located next to my present home on South Church Street. The place is known as Big House. This is Dr. Roy McTaggart. He's a man who for over 50 years has played an important part in the political and economic life of Grand Cayman. My earliest recollection is my first day of school at about the age of four. My teacher was W.M. Cochran, a Scotchman. School was held in the old building presently situated across the street from Emsa Memorial Church. Sometime later, Mr. Goring came here and started another school. He was from Barbados. There was no high school educational facilities available at that time. And so after I had progressed as far as possible in the school here, my mother took me to Mobile, Alabama where I was enrolled in Barton Academy. Later, we returned to Grand Cayman, and I was sent to Jamaica to Excelsior College, where I received a diploma, which was equivalent to a university degree. I became a member of the Legislative Assembly in 1916, and during this time, the teacher, Mr. Goring, and myself put forth a bill which made education compulsory in the Cayman Islands. This bill formed the nucleus for the present educational system which we now enjoy. In 1922, public schools became a reality. And since then, the educational process has come a long way. The only means of communication we had with the outside world was by sailing boat. Even though on a certain morning, the people in Georgetown saw two British cruisers in hot pursuit of a German cruiser. We knew absolutely nothing about what is happening until about eight days afterwards, a little boat came here from Kimmelbrack and told us that we were at war with Germany. It is hard to believe, but it is definitely the fact that we were so much apart from the world that uh, anything could have happened and we would never have known what was taking place. When uh, Jamaica got its independence in 1962, we were offered two alternatives by the British government. And Sir Kenneth Blackburn came to Cayman on, for that purpose. He had a meeting of the assembly, and he gave us two propositions. One, to remain as we were under the British government as a crown colony. Or two, to get internal self-government, but we would be under Jamaica. And in five years, we'd become a part of Jamaica and lose our identity. To me, I thought this was absolutely ridiculous with the result that I got out and I started canvassing the island from one end of the place to the other. So much so that the people were so much on my side that I received over 3,000 signatures saying to remain as we were. We came to the meeting and, uh, of course, all of the other members, 17 and all, the whole assembly comprised 18 members and 17 of them were against me. And they all, most of them, uh, spoke. some of them spoke before I did and said that they were in favor of this internal self-government under Jamaica. And when my turn, I got up and I spoke, I suppose, for about an hour. And I, I told them facts and figures and everything else. And I told them that I thought we were doing a most ridiculous thing, that uh, to be under Jamaica in the first place, 
we had no, definitely no emigration restrictions of Jamaicans coming to Kima, and that was one most unfortunate situation that we would have had to face. And uh, I pointed out to them that Jamaica being a, a new little country, it could not protect itself. They had no navy, no army, and how could it protect us in case anything happened? So, uh, well, my arguments are so strong and convincing that when the, the votes were called, it was all a landslide for me, a unanimous vote to remain as we were a crown colony under the British government. The outcome of this was that the Cayman Islands, for the first time, became a direct dependency of the crown. Uh, soon afterwards, I was invited to Jamaica to um, a cocktail party given by the government. And thanks to who at the time was the uh, prime minister, he found out that I was there and he came and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, you are the devil that kept me from getting my hands on the Cayman Islands. And I said to him, thank God. 